Technique number two in the Kippo Christ, Christ uh, Purple Belt curriculum is Snap and Twig. So this is our push family, and the push attack uh, for this one is going to be a left center line push. We saw one of those again in the last level here towards the end uh, with repeating mace. And so repeating mace, as we fell back, we kind of went back to a corner this way and hooked the arm and we went to the back side. This time we're going to just kind of absorb the push, coming straight back. So as it pushes to the center of the chest, we are going to receive that push. And we want to pin the hand to the body, which is a pretty constant with uh, uh, a single hand push when you're absorbing them. We're going to step back, we're going to pin the hand to the body, and as we step back this time, um, because it's center of the line, it's not twisting me, it's just pushing me back. I'm going to pin, and I'm going to hit to the elbow with the right hand, right? It's going to orbit up and hit to the, hit to the hand. And when you do this, make your arm thumb high, kind of in the position of the, uh, like you're grabbing a pipe that way. We want to hyperextend the elbow. So I'm hitting with the palm. Thumb, thumb high as you step back and pin. All of that together is step one for snap and twig. And of course it's in reference to um, twig usually being in reference to the arms and we're attacking his arm right from the beginning. So that's where the technique gets its name, snap and twig. Step back and pin, boom. Now from here I'm going to hook and again we're, we're pulling the arm out of the way but we're also drawing it towards us. So you're going to use friction, right, as that crane hand comes down the arm, you're jerking them forward. And that's what we want to see. So the reaction comes here as I hook, boom, and I'm pulling them in. And as you're pulling them forward here at the same time, this arm's going to thrust, but in a sword hand position. And it's doing that uh, horizontal sword hand. Inward, or it's an outward direction there. Fingers are pointing to the inside though with that thrusting sword hand. And this is right to the throat. So steps one comes back, boom, hits here. Step two, I'm pulling and thrusting at the same time. For step three, I'm going to orbit this arm, let it continue in its path, and it's going to hit straight down on top of their forehead here, on top of the, the head. Again, it's the hardest part of the body, but we're hitting with the hammer fist here. So the hammer fist can deliver a, a lot of force and hit a hard skeletal thing and not break your arm in the process. So I'm coming down on his head. What I want to do is knock the head forward. This way. Boom. So we've pulled them forward as we hit them back. Again, Kempo's doing that. Come here, go away, come here, go away. It lifts you up, drops you down. Um, always uh, creating a reaction in the opponent that sets up the next attack. So as we pull here, boom, pulling them forward and at the same time knocking them back by hitting them in the throat. But that brings the head down. We'll hit the top of the head, further pulling them forward as you hammer fist down through the top of the head. And then let this arm come in and orbit into an inward elbow and heel palm. Depending on their range, if this is a long range attack, this is a much closer range attack. So if I hit the top of the head and they don't move very much, if the head just kind of comes down but it doesn't really project them forward, you'll probably have to add a little push drag there on the last step to, to cover that distance. So this is hitting temple. And this is hitting the temple as you bring the two together. Um, but it may, as you hit the top of the head, bend them over enough that they come to you that you can go right into that, that elbow smash. It, it really depends on what their reaction is. For the sake of practicing it, I would go ahead. I've gotten used to just adding that slide there at the end, that little push drag, um, just to be sure. Um, but uh, but it, may, it may knock them down far enough. It's, the technique's meant to knock them down far enough that you don't have to have it. Uh, however, we don't, uh, you know, better be safe than sorry. So again, the whole thing together, snapping twig, I'm going to pin the hand, I come back and hit to the elbow, hook, pull and hand sword to the throat, let this arm continue to circle down on top of the head, horizontally, and then smash, coming in vertically with that elbow and heel palm. And then from there, I'm full cover out again. Now this level in purple belt, part of its focus is speed. We want to speed things up a little bit. So as you practice snap your twig, you want to start speeding the steps up so that you can move quickly going through all, all those stages here. This, this whole level is going to focus on that. Um, again, it's possible to get, and, and um, it 
happens a lot with Kimbo, actually. You can get really, really fast with this stuff, but it's going to a point where it's faster than they actually have time to respond to. Again, every, every attack in Kimbo should set up a reaction in the opponent that sets up the next attack. So if I'm moving so fast here to here, I hit his throat, and he, I'm moving so fast he doesn't have time for his head to come down, then I'm not going to have anything there for this. This is going to miss if their head hasn't even come down from that hand sword yet. So um, you want to move quickly with this. We want to be fast. In fact, there's, there's probably some benefit of practicing it as fast as you can just for the sake of the fast twitch muscles. But don't make that your, your all-the-time practice. You want your muscle memory to allow enough time for there to be a reaction in the opponent. So it still wants to be quick, but not so fast that you're getting there faster than they can. Right? So I want this quick, but I'm going to need to take a second here to allow their head to come down for that hammer fist to land. And then come in. So it's alright to take a beat. Take a small pause at certain points to allow enough time for the reaction in the uh, opponent to take place. Um, it's not my goal as a Kempo guy, some of people make it their goal, to just simply be the fastest one. Uh, you want to be fast, you want to be able to be quick, but it's possible to be too fast and make your technique not work because you're moving faster than they have time to respond. Um, the techniques work because there's a response that's given. We're not just expecting them to be statues and we can hit them blah, 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 as fast as we want and several times in several places. Every hit sets up a reaction which is supposed to then give you the next target. That only works if they have time to respond um, in, in form of how you've hit them. So don't go so fast with this that they don't have time to respond to each one of each each one of the hits that you're landing because it sets up the next one. And then of course don't forget last part of the technique is our full cover out to get you distance. That's technique number two and that's snapping twig.